All right, so one of the things we always like to look at is how someone's knee is traveling over their foot, right, over the toes. And it's really an ankle assessment and specifically ankle dorsiflexion, right? So how much can our toes kind of come up towards our face, right? Or in this case, how, how far can our knee travel over our toes? And this is going to be a really important movement to have when it comes to like uh, anything with like squatting or lunging, um, even walking, right? Just uh, even like day-to-day -day stuff. And it's going to be one of the first things we look at, especially if someone has um, some sort of knee pain. So how this assessment goes, pretty simple. You're just going to get up against the wall and you're going to come about a fist and a thumbs width away, right? Your foot stays nice and flat as you're in this half kneeling position. And then you want to make sure that your hips stay square to the, to the wall. So you don't want to cheat and um, have your hips kind of flail out or um, you know, whatever, however you're going to compensate. The next thing is we also want to make sure that our pelvis stays kind of tucked underneath us to get a true assessment. We don't want to um, get all the motion from our back, right? So we're trying to eliminate all the other variables and get true ankle um, range of motion. So we're going to just kind of tuck our pelvis a little bit, hips stay square. Foot has to remain in full contact the entire time on the floor. And then all we're going to do is drive forward and see how far are we away from the wall. So for me on my right ankle, I'm somewhere about like three and four fingers, right? And then, and what do you want to do when you're at the end, end range? You want to ask yourself what feels like it's limiting you. Is it more of a pull or a stretch in the back of the calf? Or is it more of a bony block in the front of the ankle? And depending on which you feel is going to dictate what we're going to do to address this if there's any limitation. So let's just see what I'm looking like side to side. All right, so we'll get about the same thing. Thumb and a, thumb and a fist. Square up. Good. So I'm probably a little closer on this side, right? I'm probably closer to three or two fingers away. Right. And the, and the other thing to note too, is the, the knee is traveling over the middle two toes, right? So you're not going to have your knee come in this way or flail, flail out to the side. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to see which, which is, what is the limiting structure that's not getting us, um, that's not allowing us to go forward. So for me, it was my, more of my calf on my right, and we could see a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to show you some things in the next video on how to address um, that, that tight calf. Mm. All right, so now that we figured out that my calf is what's limiting my knee from traveling over my toes, we're going to try to address this a little bit. And for the most part, we're really just going to see if we could clear up any soft tissue restrictions, right? Any tightness in the muscle or the fascia, um, you know, take your pick of however you want to uh, address it, right? But we're going to go through two different things. So we could either start with something like a foam roller, right, or self-massage or whatever it is that's going to um, kind of give us that same uh, myofascial-like massage uh, modality. And then I'm going to take you through more of an active stretch. So to start off, let's just go through a calf smash here. So if you have a foam roller handy, um, you know, you can follow along. So you're just going to get the, the calf on the foam roller and you're going to try to just get some weight onto the calf, right? It's a little, this is a little um, awkward, especially if you have, uh, you know, if your shoulders are a bit of a problem, this could be um, not the best. So what we're going to do is we're try to get as much weight as we can on the calf. And we're just going to scan for anything that feels like super tight or like tender or just not as fun to be on, right? So for me, it's about here. And I'm just gonna try to get used to the pressure. We can even try to roll out in, you know, side to side and try to get more of like a 360 degree. So even here, like more specifically is, is really tender. And then once I'm here, I'm just gonna try to just go through some movement, right? So I'm gonna just gonna go some gas pedals all the way up, all the way down. I could start to do some circles, right? We go clockwise and then counterclockwise. And then once I feel like I made a little bit of change or it's not as tender anymore, I could just start to scan up and down for another spot, right? And we'll do this for maybe two or three segments, right? We won't, we won't spend too much time, uh, especially for the sake of the video. Um, but we, basically, you just want to scan for any tight or tender points and just work them out with a little bit of movement. Okay, so we're just going to go a couple ankle pumps, a couple ankle circles. You don't want to spend any more than two or three minutes when you're doing something like foam rolling, right? No, no matter what it is, whether it's your calf, your quad, whatever. Um, if you're spending more than two or three minutes, that, then you're, you're, you're just kind of beating a dead horse. And if, it hasn't, if that hasn't solved the problem by then, it, it's probably not going to. So we can move on. The next thing that we'll do is I want to get into more of an active calf stretch. So this is going to be the high hips calf stretch. So what we're going to do is get into a little bit of a plank position, get our hips up high like in a pike. We can kind of go loop one foot over the other. We're going to come up onto our toes and then just start to lower down the heel towards the floor. We want to do it nice, slow, and controlled. 
deep stretch in the back of the calf, and then we're going to start to work some movement as we flex our foot forward. So we could do this somewhere between five and ten times. We don't have to stay here all day. And then as we, as we lower the foot, we should already start to feel even just a little bit more comfortable lowering, even if our heel isn't quite getting to the floor. And then, as always, we want to retest what, um, if any, changes that we've made. So I'll show you um, what, we'll re reassess my right ankle and see if our, my knee has gotten any further to the bottom. All right, so now I want to retest what my, my ankle range of motion looks like after I did some calf smashing um, and that high hip ankle stretch. Because we always want to make sure we're assessing and reassessing to make sure that we're at least um, pulling on the right thread, right? That we're actually, this is actually solving somewhat of the of the issues is why I'm limited, right? And if, it's, if we don't get the improvement that we're looking for, then we have to start thinking and navigating um, as to what some other reasons might be as to why I'm not able to um, get the correct range of motion. So um, let's just retest real quick, right? So I'm gonna get my hips squared. I'm gonna come forward. And I'd say maybe that's a little bit better. Maybe at best it's probably like a finger, a finger's width's better, right? But what I'm not feeling so much, I'm not feeling so much of a pull on my calf, but now I'm kind of getting more of that uh, like bony block over at the ankle. So what we want to do now is we're going to go through a, a self joint mobilization that's going to try to help clear up any joint restriction that I might be getting at the front of the ankle. And then we'll come back again and retest it too. All right, so we're going to work on our band of joint mobilization uh, for the ankle. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get a um, some sort of power band. You don't actually need this. I think it, it, it helps to enhance the mobilization we're about to go through, um, but we could basically do the same exact thing without using the band. But uh, if you have a band, we're going to get one, and I want you to place the band over where your foot meets your ankle, right? So it's going to be below these two big bumps on the side of my ankle, right? Right in the front there. And it's probably better off doing it without shoes, but I have pretty low cut, uh, minimalist shoes on, so this is going to work for me. So all I'm going to do is once I get that band in place is I just want to keep my foot flat and we're basically going to turn the assessment into the mobilization. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go through three different planes of our ankle mobilization, right? Because our, our ankle doesn't have to just travel forward. We have to make sure we're operating in all um, available planes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start hip square, knee travels forward. We're going to go just towards that big toe a little bit, right? Just to the end range, right? Try to take an inhale. Exhale at the top, see if you get a little further, back off. And we're going to do this some, somewhere between three and five times going over the big toe. And then we'll start going into our second plane, right? So we'll go right over the middle two toes, same thing. Good. And we'll go same thing again over the middle two toes. And then the last one we're going to go just the knee's going to shade towards the pinky. So the same thing. I want to keep my, my arches engaged by, while I'm going to kind of grip the, the floor with my big toe, where I'm pressing my big toes down. So my foot stays flat and my arches are on. And then I'm just going to take through the, the range of motion that I have. This is a little bit of an awkward position. I thought it would be better for the camera, but in reality, you could do this in a half kneeling position just the same as you were doing um, the, the assessment. So let's go back over and we're gonna see if we made any improvements um, for the ankle joint mold. All right, so this is gonna be our reassessment after the band of joint mobilization. So again, we're just gonna get ourselves about five inches from the wall, make sure the foot's flat, All right? Squared off. And now, now we're starting to get some more range of motion here, right? So I'm, I'm definitely closer to like three fingers width than I was before, right? And I definitely feel like my knee is able to uh, glide a little bit more fluidly. So we've gone through a little bit how to clear the ankle joint, right? For any uh, either joint mobilization restrictions or um, soft tissue restrictions. And we could kind of navigate through those two things to see if we can get a little bit more of our ankle dorsiflexion back that's gonna improve our squat, lunge, um, and even our gait patterns too.